Hey there, it's Kathy with Be Creative with Kathy. And today I have some really cute shaker cards that I'm gonna show you and um, make with you today. But before we go on, I just wanna warn you that it's tomorrow's the last day of May. Can you believe it? Well, first of all, happy Memorial Day and thank you to all those who have served. I can't believe that May's almost over, which in my eyes means that spring is almost over because really June in my eyes means summer, but time is flying way too fast. But long story short, just to warn you that if you're interested in the starter kit, the in color starter kit, that's only available through tomorrow. So if you have any questions, you can go to my online store, which the link will be below or stampinup.com and all the answers about the starter kit should be in there. If not, reach out and I'll let you know or I'll answer what I can. But then start June 1st, Stampin' Up! has a promotion that all of their kits collection is buy one, get one free. No, nope, buy one, get one half. There we go, that's a little bit different. Buy one, get one 50% off. So you can't find the kits collection in the catalog. I think they mention them a little bit, but you need to go online. You can go to my online store. Like I said, the link is in the um, description. But they have tons and tons of kits, really nice kits that some of them don't require any stamping. Some of them require little stamping. Some of them require more stamping. Some of them are even um, big. It's like this one of the kits is a magnet board. Look, my magnets are stuck. That looks like this. It's a 12 by 12 magnet board. It has everything in there. All the extra little bits and pieces I have in a bag here that make the little um, envelopes that you can just clip on there and put all your little extra pieces. This kind of thing is in the kits collection. And then they have, let me get this out of the way. Then they have kits like this one that don't even have stamping. All of the um, stamping is done like this. Or I guess I should say all the greetings are done like this. So you can just um, punch those out, add those to your card. And just like that, bada bing, bada boom, you got your cards. Although look how pretty this kit is with the card bases in the shape of a, they have regular card bases, they had butterfly card bases. Of course they have the beautiful envelopes that I absolutely love, all the little extra pieces and parts. But like I said, in this one, no stamping at all, but you get um, nine cards, three different cards of three different styles. So Stampin' Up! kits have come a long way in, um, recently, and I suggest that's something that you might want to go check out. But like I said, wait till June so you can buy one, get one at 50% off. But so today's kit that I'm going to use is this one, and it's called Light the Candles Card Kit. And it has everything in this kit to make these cards. In fact, they look like this. Look how cute they are. And I don't know if you can see that shimmer in there on the back there now you can see the shimmer look how pretty those are like and it has everything in the kit like this that you will need like for instance it has um your adhesive in fact instead of dimensionals it has these adhesive or these foam strips and of course your glue dots it has your bling in there or embellishments the stamp set you even get a block in there a clear block to mount your stamp set you get an uh, ink spot. This one is Coastal Cabana. And then, of course, you get all the little pieces and parts of paper that go with the kit to make the kit like that. And you get your pretty envelopes. Look at those. And then, of course, you get your card. Let me see if I can get them out here. I know they're stuck. Yep. And then, of course, you get your card bases. And then this piece here. Oh, I bent one of my card pieces. Anyway, this piece here is the card with the chipboard that the kit comes with. And now if you don't have um, a pierce mat or a stamp pad or something like that, I would suggest that you use this and you stamp on that. That just gives these photopolymer or clear stamps a little bit of cushion and you'll get a better um, image on your on your card. I put my box away and I'm gonna put some of this stuff away. I'm gonna keep one of these out and one of these out because we're gonna use those for our cards today. I'm not gonna use the envelopes. I'll keep my stamp set out. Now, instead of using the ink spot, I'm gonna bring in my standard ink pads. And now, I don't know if you noticed on my card, they have Coastal Cabana on theirs. I kinda use Night and Navy. For some reason, I like to have a dark greeting on my card, so I'm gonna bring in Night of Navy too. 
And then for my blocks, I have all my blocks here because I'm too lazy to take and clean a stamp to change blocks. So I'm going to just use all my blocks that I have already. I think I need everything else. So I'm going to leave everything else out. <coughs> you do in the kit get instructions that have step-by-step -step colored, <coughs> excuse me, everything that you would need to make your cards. And really, we're going to follow the instructions more or less, but I'm going to change just a few things up, and I am going to bring... Now, if you bought this kit, you saw all the adhesives are in there, the stamps are in there, the ink is in there. The only thing really you would need is something to clean your stamps afterward. And really, I just take them to the sink and run them under cold water or clear water, and that's how I would clean my stamps. But for this today, I'm going to bring in some other products that I have just because I have them and it makes my life a little bit easier when I use them. Also, if you notice, I like layers. So I'm gonna cut my card bases down and add an extra layer. So let's do that first. I'm gonna bring in a sheet of Nida Navy. This is just one of the colors on the back of the instruction sheet here. It has all the coordinating colors with Stampin' Up! So that way you know if you wanna bring in a different color, what color to bring in. It's just a helpful tip. And I'm going to bring in, like I said, a sheet of Night and Navy and my cutting, my paper trimmer here. And the first thing I'm going to do is this is a full sheet, so it's 8.5 by 11. I have the 11, no, <laughs> yeah, 8.5 by 11. That was a brain fart. I have the 8.5 inch up here at top, and I'm going to score it first. So that's using the lighter blade on my trimmer at 4 and a fourth. And then I'm going to just cut it in half here. I'm going to put the 11 inch up at the top here. And I'm going to cut it in half at um, five and a half. So now I have two ready to go scored card bases. And then with one of the card bases that comes with the kit, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down to five and a fourth. So this part up here is the five and a half inch side. I'm going to just cut a fourth of an inch off of there. And then because we have this score line down the mid center, I'm gonna cut off four inches off of each side because I don't want that score line on my card. And then real quick, I'm gonna do the same thing to the other base just so we have it ready since I have my trimmer out. So again, five and a fourth. And then I'm gonna cut each side down to four. And this is just going to create, like I said, a nice layer on the front of my card because I am a layer snob. I like lots of layers on my card, and this way I can add one more layer. Okay, so let's fold our um, card base here in half. I can use my bone folder, get a nice fold there. And then I am going to go ahead and take this piece here and just add it to the front. And there again, now I'm going to bring in, instead of using the little glue dots that come in the kit, I'm going to just use my tape runner that's a little bit faster. And I'm going to layer this right on the front. Of that card. And then this one right on the front. of this card. And there, now we have our card bases. Now, this pattern doesn't quite excite me. This, I think this is really fun and there's lots of stuff you could do with this one. For example, I think you saw it before. Look how I just took that and used it as a card base for another card and that little stamp set there. Because this stamp set, I think you could use again and again and again. So I'm going to save this piece of um, card base for another card of a later time. This one, like I said, I'm not quite so interested, so I'm going to just turn that over and I'm going to use this for the inside of my card. And we're going to stamp on that, but I'm going to go ahead and bring in a sheet of basic white and cut another inside for my other card. So there again, I'm going to lay it at five and a fourth. Cut that down and then cut one at four inches. And now I have the inside 
for my card. Okay, so now let's do some stamping, especially because I'm going to do some um, of that Night and Navy ink, and I want to give it a, large, a long time to dry. So let's bring in the stamp set and a couple blocks. I think the first thing I want to do, did you see what the stamp set looks like? It looks like this. It has Make a Wish, Wishing for You. Um, it's Today's Your Day. Light the candles and make a wish. Happy, happy birthday. Hip, hip, hooray. And then birthday wishes. So I want to do this happy birthday to you. Did I even read that one? On one of my cards. And then these long strips here. This happy, happy birthday. Oh, and I got the wrong one. Happy, happy birthday here. I'm going to just set on one of my blocks here. Because he's long and skinny. And then this one that says light the candles. I'm going to put that on the block too. Did you hear all my blocks flying? Oh, and it's crooked. Let me um, make sure it lays flat or straight. There we go. And then they have some of these little, um, I call them embellishments, but this just looks like little sprinkles. I'm going to set that up on a block and these little flowers like this. I think they're flowers. I'm going to put those together on a block so we can stamp them at the same time. And then last and not least, Today's your day. That's the one I couldn't read before. I'm going to put that up on a block and then the rest of them I'll save for another card. I think that's everything. We'll see if I forget one or two of them. Okay, so like I said, we're going to stamp the insides of our card. Let me bring back in the cards so you can see what we're going to stamp on the front. They look like that. There you go. So if I'm going to say hip hip hooray, which I didn't get, let me get the hip hip hooray out. And that one I'll put on the block that comes with the kit. And if you turn it diagonal like that, it fits on there. Oh, and sticks to my desk. Fits on there just fine. But So if we're going to put hip hip hooray on this one, I want to put happy birthday on the inside of that. So in that night and navy, and that happy, happy birthday, I'm going to ink that up good. And then, oh, and here, here's what we need now. Now, here's where to stamp under here. I either need to bring in that chipboard that came with the kit, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my Stamparatus. Now, I'm going to show you a couple ways today that you can use the Stamparatus. The first way is, is I'm going to take this foam mat that comes with it for photopolymer, and that's what I'm going to use to stamp on like that. So I get a nice image with my photopolymer stamp. So let me ink that up again. Happy, happy birthday right here. Try to get it straight. Straight enough. There we go. And then with that um, Coastal Cabana, I'm going to bring in those like confetti kind of sprinkle things. And I'm going to just throw those around my happy, happy birthday like that. Okay. Then on my other card that goes up and down or portrait, I'm going to bring in that... Um, Blow out the candles and make a wish. No, it says light the candles. Whoops. And make a wish. I think it's still a little crooked, but it's going to be just fine. There we go. And with that one, I'm going to bring those little kind of flower looking. And I think they look kind of like the tops of a candle too. And I'm going to just add a little bit of color with that too. Now for the front of our card, we need all those little bits and pieces of paper. And I'm going to make... I have a mess here. This yellow card first. So I'm going to bring in one of those circles. We need to stamp on that. Then we need this little piece here. We need this piece here. And this one here. I think we have all the pieces. But this is the piece that I want to stamp on. And I'm going to stamp that. Um, I think it says happy birthday to you. So I'm going to go straight up, straight down and have that stamped and ready to go and put all my little pieces aside, let that ink dry. And then on the other card, which looks like this, I wanna stamp on a long strip and that little strip there. So this is the blue strip, this is the little strip, and this is the long white strip. I'm gonna stamp that hip hip hooray on that long white strip 
in the Knight of Navy. And since these stamps are photopolymer see-through, you can see right through them to get it straight just how you want it. Let that ink sink into the paper. Look, and there you go. Look how cute that is. I love the sayings in the stamp set. I'm gonna set that aside and bring in those, um, the words that say, today's your day. And I'm gonna stamp that on this little piece here. Did I get my head in the camera? Sorry about that. So there we go. So then I'm gonna set those pieces aside and let all of that ink dry and then I won't get it smeared, I won't get my fingers in it, put my ink pads away, set all my stamp sets away, or my stamp stamps, my stamp set is put away. And now it's time to make our shaker part. So like I said, I'm gonna start with this card first. Oops, I'm gonna set these two pieces aside. And these are the pieces for the shaker card. So on the back of this one is where I want to put my little strips. Now in the instructions, let's see what they say. In the instructions it says that I'm supposed to um, cut them apart and put them here and there and place them right here. It says right here. I couldn't find it. How you put them on the card like this. But we're not going to do that part because we're going to make, make them into a shaker card. So I'm going to just outline that little piece of cake. And it says in the instructions we're supposed to use four. So I'm going to see if I need, if we're gonna run out of foam strips by doing the whole kit as a shaker card or if four is enough. And I think we won't, I, uh, it'll be interesting. I should have counted them, but look at all those little things on there. I don't think I could count all of those. Oh, and you know what? I already got ahead of myself. Hold on, we gotta take these back off. Shame on me, because we need a window sheet in there. My sequins are totally gonna fall through that little hole. I hope I can salvage those. Okay, so like I said, we need a window sheet to put in here. So you recognize this? Now when you get a new stamp set now, especially a photopolymer, stamping up puts them on a piece of window sheet like this. Now I'm gonna use this window sheet right here. So I need to cut it down, which was part of my stamp set. So let's bring in a ruler and see how big I need it. So it, this piece, is about a little over three inches by, and really we don't need to cover the whole thing. So I'm gonna go two and three fourths by three and three fourths, and that will cover my whole cupcake here. Bring in my trimmer and go two and three fourths, and three and three fourths. Now these little pieces that are left over are so small, I'll never find them again because first of all, they're clear. So I'm gonna just go ahead and put those in the trash. This one, then I'm gonna just take some liquid glue. Although the little dots that come in your kit would work too, but I'm gonna outline that little piece of cake with just a thin line. Well, I thought I had my glue all set and ready. Oh, now it's gonna come out like barrels. There we go, just a thin line of liquid glue around that cake. And then I am gonna just put some little dots of glue here to make sure that that sticks really well to my window sheet. Okay, then I'm gonna take my window sheet and stick that down to my card. So then you can't see it, but now you have that piece that's gonna hold my sequins into my card. Now let's just start again and put those um, foam strips around my little cake. And now this is just going to hold the sequins that we put in there into place. So first of all, I wanna make sure I don't leave a lot of extra room because we want the sequins to show through that window. I'm gonna cut this foam strip here down. To size there. One more, see, and I did one, two, three, it did take four, so I have a feeling you'd have enough foam strips to make all your cards into shaker cards. There we go. And now you can see, there's no holes, as I'm gonna call it, around 
that would let my sequins fall out of the, sequ uh, the shaker card. So then on this piece, I'm gonna bring in, now these are um, Stampin' Up's new everyday fancy sequins, and I'll tell you what, I love these things. Look how pretty they are. First of all, they have beads and extra stuff in there, so they, when they shake, they really make the noise. Can you see all those little bits and pieces in there? And they come in three separate colors in three separate containers, so they won't even get mixed up. But I have a little spoon here. I like to use, I think this is a cocktail spoon. I don't know, I found mine at the Dollar Tree. But I'm gonna take, oh, and you know what? Before I do that, I always get ahead of myself. I'm gonna bring in now my Stamparatus base. And I'm gonna set my piece of cardstock. Can you see that right here in the corner? And then I'm gonna put my little sequins, and that's too many. I don't think I want a full spoonful. We'll see how many, because I want a few of the little pink ones. I'm gonna even take a little bit, a couple of the green ones. Not too many. We wanna make sure that it still has room to shake. And then a few of these little blue ones. I am making a huge mess. I don't remember making a mess on my sample cards like this, so I think you guys make me nervous on the video. But we'll try to get all those little sequins right there on that little card stock here. There we go. And then, like I said, I have it in this corner here. So now when I take the backs off of the foam strips here, And you know, look, I have an extra little piece here. I'm gonna just put it up at the top so that way my top doesn't sag. I don't think it would have sagged, but I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna put it up there anyway. I should have taken the piece that I cut over here. But anyway, so then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna line this corner up. Let me put it in the camera. This corner up with this corner down here. And when you use the Stamparatus to get it in there, look how easy it is to line up that way and it looks like that. Now, one thing I knew I was gonna forget to do, I forgot to do it on my sample cards, and of course I'm gonna forget to do it on my live video here, is I wanted to stamp on this little piece. If you look here, they have those little confettis here and there, and I think that looks really cute. So I'm gonna take the chance, and I'm gonna stamp those now, even though my card's not flat. Now, if you have a really juicy ink pad, and um, you shouldn't have to tap really hard on your paper, and maybe, look, not too bad. I can get it to where it's on there. Yeah, it still looks okay. We'll put a few down here. There we go, phew! All right, so make sure when you're making your card, you stamp those first before it's bumpy. So now we need to put this onto our card base here. I want this to stick on here really, really well. So you could either use liquid glue. I'm gonna just bring in some tear and tape and I'm gonna put a little bit of tear and tape on the back of these. There again, oh, tore my paper. That's strong tear and tape. You could also just use the glue dots that come in the kit. I think the tear and tape is a little bit faster, especially for the video. Get those backs off. Hopefully this little piece of paper that's sticking up here that was my card back. Well, no, he didn't come off with the back. We'll just pluck him off like that. We don't care what the back looks like. We only care what the front looks like. And the front turned out really cute. Look at that. So then make sure my card opens the right way. And we're just going to lay that down there, right there. Now, the thing I love about these sequins is, listen, I think a shaker card, the noise is just as important as the, the shaker parts inside. In fact, sometimes you can't even see them, but the fact that you can hear them is what makes it really fun. Let's go ahead and put the inside of our card on there. There we go. 
go and then we'll finish decorating the front here so I have that little blue piece which is a, a die cut piece in the card kit and I'm gonna just lay it right here just like the instructions show and then with this I'm even gonna bring a dimensional in you put a dimensional right there on the back now my hope is with all these extra pieces that I've been bringing in, that they're just part of your stamping stuff. I mean, we have tons of stuff as stampers, and hopefully those are just the pieces that you'll have on your on hand as you go. Now the last thing we need for this card is some of those embellishments. And I'm gonna just take one here and put it right here on the center of that little candle fire, I guess you'd call it. And there you go. So there's one shaker card. Let's go ahead and finish up the other one. Find all my little pieces here. So I have my card base here. Let me bring in the cards so you can see what we're gonna do. I have a total mess here. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take another one of those window sheets. Like I said, this is just from a stamp set. We're gonna measure this piece here and see what size um, window sheet we need. So this one I'm going to use inches is right at four and a half so I'm going to cut it down to maybe three and seven eighths by three inches. Let's bring in our paper trimmer. So three and seven eighths right there. I'm gonna save this piece, this one's pretty big, for another project by three inches. So then again, I'm gonna take my liquid glue and just go around the edges of my candles here. Whoop, not too far. There we go, I kind of ran off the edge here, but I think we're good. Now, since I got a lot of glue on this one, I'm gonna sit and let that dry just a little bit. That way it doesn't ooze out. It'd just be really sticky and stay there. And so while I'm waiting for that, which shouldn't take too long, I'm gonna go ahead and put the inside of my card to the inside of my base. I think maybe that's all I can do though. Everything else is needs to have the front done. Like that. All right, let's just go ahead and slap it down and hope it doesn't ooze everywhere. Usually I would wait. And look, I cut my I cut my piece the wrong size or do I have the wrong one? Nope, I had the wrong piece. This is the piece I'm saving. This is the piece I'm putting on my card. Phew, I thought I cut it down the wrong size. There we go. Lay it down, cover those candles. Looky there. Now, if you had a bunch of smears and something on your um, window sheet here, you could just take a little alcohol swab and wipe it down and let it dry and clean it off, and then you wouldn't have those um, spots on your card. Now, mine was pretty good, so I didn't even worry about it. I thought it worked out just fine the way it was. Let's go ahead and put those adhesive strips on the back and there again I'm gonna see if I can use four is enough with this one but I don't think this one I think we're gonna need more so if you run out of adhesive strips that's something you can find at my online store we sell foam adhesive strips they're just exact well they're not they're the same height as these they're just a little bit longer so we in my online store our adhesive strips are nine inches in length, so you would just have to cut them down to the size you need them. Go, take this piece, making sure there's no room for those sequins to fall out. So all the way around. Although really on this piece, you could even use these side pieces too. You might have enough. I should have counted them. I'm just too lazy. So I'm gonna take this, I'm even gonna bend this a little bit like this, but we just need to cover, or make a little slot, I guess you'd call it, 
for our sequins here. One more piece right there. And now there's no place that our um, sequins can fall out. I'm gonna hang on this piece. I'm gonna set up here at the top so that way he's um, sturdy up there. I'm gonna bring this piece in. I'm gonna bring in my Stamparatus base again and put this piece, there's a sequin, down here in the corner. Now on this one, I'm gonna start with the blue sequins. I'm gonna put about a half a scoop in here of blue. Now this one I think has a little bit more room, so I'm gonna use a little bit more sequins, but I'm gonna kinda of lay them out and spread them out. And then that way I can see if I have enough. A little bit of green here. And then last we'll put just a little touch of pink in there. Get all those little sequins off and on. And I think there's little beads in there too, and I think that's what gives it the really good shake. Okay, and I'm gonna spread these around a little bit, making sure that they stay on those colored pieces of my white paper here. And that way I know they're in the boundaries, I guess you'd call it, of my foam strips. And take these backs off. last piece that's all of them I think yep and now again using the Stamparatus base here I've got that all the way in the corner I'm gonna just set this in the corner and then they're gonna line up just right nice and easy just simple like that and there we go thank goodness I didn't need to um, stamp on that one huh or would be <laughs> stamping again but there you go so now I have this piece once again I'm gonna take and put some of that sticky strip on the back Just as really strong glue to hold your shaker piece so it doesn't fall off your card. It has some weight to it. This is how fun that is. Okay, let's take the backs off. And then center this right here on the front. Just like that bring in those um, embellishments again. Let's put them on each of the candles or the flames here. I sometimes getting underneath to get that adhesive because these have adhesive dots on the back and trying to get under there we go I gotta just bend the plastic a little bit and look we have all of our little um this one's not cooperating try to get it there we go look how cute those are okay now we just need to put this piece on I'm gonna just take that same tape runner and put this right along. Oh, it looks centered about there. That looks good. And then I'm going to take this up on some dimensionals. And set him right above does that look straight about right there and then I am I'm gonna cheat and use a piece of um, this strip here I guess it's not cheating right and I'm gonna set this right here on my cardstock remove that backing and then I'm gonna use that put that it's your day right here so it's just a little bit taller has a little bit more depth there so there you go so there's my shaker cards let me bring in um, the other cards that were without the shaker parts. So this is what the card looks like, the kit, and this is what the shaker cards look like. Here's 
this one. And then of course, if you have all of these extra pieces like this, like I said, you could even bring in and make another card. And believe it or not, this is a shaker card too. So there you go. So I don't have any measurements to share with you today. So um, on my blog will just be a supply list of all the supplies that I brought in that are extra from the kit. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you back here Friday. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.